Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I was prepared to talk about the um, <clears throat> the impact of the two, the removal of two missing ministers, the defense minister and foreign uh, foreign minister, the impact of um, the removal of those two individuals on the CCP politics. And then uh, less than an hour ago, I just learned that Li Keqiang passed away. And there's just so much... Um, you know, so much shock. And so I decided to change the topic uh, to talk about the impact of Li Keqiang's passing on, um, on Xi Jinping, how, he, how he, he actually has reacted in a very subtle way. I, I found it. We'll, we'll talk about that. And also, most importantly, the impact of um, the passing of Li Keqiang on the Chinese people. So uh, uh, just to give you a little bit background, so he was Li Keqiang was in Shanghai, and he passed away due to uh, heart it, it's um, heart attack or some kind of a heart disease. Uh, his his heart disease or heart attack happened on the twenty sixth, which is you know in in Shanghai it's there are twelve hours uh, ahead of us. And he passed away at midnight on the 27th, which is our noon time today, um, at the age of 68. And the the announcement, CCP's announcement came out at 8.06 o'clock um, their morning, which is our 8.06 p.m. tonight. And the announcement was very short. It only just said that he passed away and the, uh, his obituary will follow. So they didn't even have time to draft um, an obituary. And so it was just a very, very brief announcement. But this was from the CCTV. Um, now, the passing of a, a, a major leader uh, like Li Keqiang usually has have has to be approved by the standing bureau of the poly uh, standing committee of the poly bureau so it took them 8 hours to make the announcement so during th those 8 hours they agreed to let this news um let this news be um be announced and it's rather a short period of time compared to the amount of time the CCP leadership took to announce, you know, the passing of its leaders like Jen Zemin. Um, so it's rather quick. And so people find that surprising. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that he did not die in Beijing. He died in Shanghai. And even if Xi Jinping and other um, top leaders want to delay the release of this information, the information probably has already gone out in Shanghai uh, because it was so unexpected. So I think that's the reason why they just announced it um, so so sh so quickly after his passing. Now, Li Keqiang is not known or was not known to suffer, to have any kind of heart ailment. He was known to have um, diabetes and so, so heart attack was hard, uh, hard for people to believe. And that's why a lot of people are, are questioning the cause of death. Many do not believe that it was a natural cause of death because they say that CCP leaders, not even, you know, people lower, even at the minister level or even deputy minister level have so much, you know, have such great health care programs um, how could they not have, you know, doctors or nurses travel with him? You know, how could they not know that he has heart um, issues? So how could he just just die like that? He's only 68. And they were comparing him to uh, Chen Zemin, who died at the age of 96. Deng Xiaoping died at um, 91. I mean, there's so many CCP elders who are in their hundreds, in their 90s. So at 68, that's like unbelievably young age for uh, a Communist Party leaders. So this is why people are speculating all kinds of reasons for his death. 
um, although those speculations don't have any, you know, to, anything to substantiate, people are just expressing their doubts or shock um, <clears throat> at that. Now, so um, now Shanghai, <laughs> unfortunately, is the uh, the home base of Xi Jinping, of the Jiang Zemin faction, or now Zheng Qinghong. Zheng Qinghong's faction. So Shanghai is not a pleasant place for Xi Jinping, right? The fact that Li Keqiang died in Shanghai uh, makes the situation more complex. So people are asking why Li Keqiang want to go to Shanghai and why, why does Xi Jinping allow him to go to Shanghai? I think they all have to kind, kind of get approval uh, from, from the central leadership if retired officials have to travel far. Um, of course, they're not they're not going to tell them, no, you cannot go there, but they have to get some kind of a okay. So why Shanghai? You know, people ask that. So um, there are a lot of speculations right now um, because people find it hard to believe that he died at such a young age. When they're just when the healthcare for CCP leaders are are the best. So what will happen next is um, what will happen. What we should watch is CCP will issue a, an obituary for him, and they will um, have hold a wake and then a, a funeral. And so when his body uh, his body will be you know, uh, will be sent back to Beijing. There will be a, a ceremony held at the airport. So Xi Jinping is more than likely to bring, to lead, the, the, you know, uh, his his wife, maybe his uh, his family, and, and also the high-ranking officials to um, to receive his body, his remain from remains from from returning. Uh, to Beijing. And so the question is, is <clears throat> excuse me, would Hu Jintao be there? Because Hu Jintao, remember, uh, was the CCP leader who was rumored to be on his, um, who was dying. There were a lot of talks, even mainstream Western media outlets have been preparing to write um, articles about his legacy a few months ago. So so who, whether or not Hu Jintao would attend his funeral is a question. It needs to be uh, watched. And also, um, would, you know, Zheng Qinghong and in his faction cause trouble for, for Xi Jinping um, at Li Keqiang's funeral? Um, now, the biggest discussion that people are, are having right now is about how much Li Keqiang suffered <laughs> while being the premier um, under Xi Jinping. Because at the time, um, Li Keqiang and Xi Jinping were both considered candidates to succeed Hu Jintao to be the fifth CCP leader. Now, Hu Jintao picked Li Keqiang and um, Jiang Zemin uh, picked someone else, picked. Um, Bo Xilai, and the two sides could not agree on a candidate, so they compromised. And the person who they they they, they mutually uh, they compromised and mutually accepted was Xi Jinping. So Xi Jinping became the fifth leader, and then um, Hu Jintao's choice of heir became his premier. Now Li Keqiang has a, a PhD in in economics and f from uh, Beijing University. And this is, it's different from the degree that other CCP leaders have said that they have. Um, Li Keqiang is considered a scholar. He really is um, an expert on, uh, on the economics. So he's a scholar. He's, um, he's very smart and, and, and obviously very, very, um, is a well-liked person. Um, but his difference, um, the, how, how much he endured and suffered under Xi Jinping um, has been the talk of, um, have been, has, has been the, the talk of people's 
conversations. So, for example, Xi Jinping proposed the advancement of the country, and Li Keqiang proposed the advancement of the people. Um, Xi Jinping declared that China has already eliminated poverty, and then Li Keqiang pointed out that 600 million Chinese um, have monthly income that's less than 1,000 renminbi, or about 150 US dollars. Xi Jinping emphasized uh, an economy that's based on uh, domestic market um, and using um, outside, how to say, uh, outside investments or uh, opportunities as a supplementary means. Whereas Li Keqiang said that um, uh, economic reforms and um, a dynamic engagement with the outside world is crucial to China's economy. And then Li Keqiang encouraged, you know, during the COVID, when the economy tanked, Li Keqiang encouraged or proposed to, to, to promote, propose to have uh, what they call Di Tan Jinji or the vendor's economy. You know how they have nightstand or uh, the, the 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 street vendor economy. So basically, have people, you know, come up with whatever products they have, and you know, if they want to sell something on the street as a street vendor, let's let's encourage that. Let's encourage people to find a means to make a living on their own. So he encouraged that, but it was um, denied by Xi Jinping because he thought that it was it was not consistent with. China's image as the world's second largest economy because it doesn't look good when you have street vendors all over Beijing. So, um, so Xi Jinping's uh, had his mayor, his his um, party secretary of Beijing, who is Cai Qi, at the time, you know, eliminated a good part of um, Beijing's population who who are considered detrimental to the image of the capital city uh, because of their poverty. So they really don't didn't see eye to eye. And at the 20th Party Congress, um, the entire reformists faction were was eliminated, Li Keqiang and also Wang Yang and Hu Chunhua. None of the three entered the Politburo. And their mentor, uh, former CCP leader Hu Jintao was removed from the stage, as you have all seen. So therefore, Li Keqiang and Wang Yang announced their retirement, and Hu Chunhua, who was supposed to be Xi Jinping's successor, only got a, a leisure job as the vice president of the P uh, Chinese People's po Political Consultative Conference. Um, at the Li Keqiang gave his final report as the premier on March 5th, and video shows that at the end of the, it, it was his last um, government work report as the premier. At the end of the report, he had a, a, a one second, a very brief handshake with Xi Jinping. The two didn't even have eye contact. It was so awkward that they just, you know, barely, you know, shook their hand. And, and then Xi Jinping immediately turned away and, and, and walked walked away. Um, so in terms of the impact, oh let me let me show you um, uh, my computer is froze again. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, sorry. Let me. This this is what Xi Jinping posted. You know, Xi Jinping is on Twitter. He has an account. He has an account uh, on Twitter, and it's called Xi's Moment. This was posted a few minutes, uh, within ten minutes after the official announcement. It was uh, at eight what forty five. If you look at the timestamp, let me. Um, I think it was it was yeah eight forty five. If you look at the time, eight forty five. So the official announcement came out eight oh six. So at eight oh eight forty five. I mean this is PM because it's you know our um, you know Eastern time, but it was eight forty five a.m. in Beijing. Um, 
he made this post. Um, of course, he didn't make this post. Someone works working for him made this post. And I just found that to be, um, I don't know what you what, what you um, think of this, but this reminds me of the prophecy book where there, there are five birds. Remember, there's a um, there's a prophecy. Sorry, I didn't have time to get the picture, but there was a, a famous prophecy book called Iron Plate Book, Tu, where they illustrates the last the ending of the last dynasty, the CCP dynasty. It was it showed a mountain peak, and there were like five birds flying. The last bird um, was a uh, was has white feather and white feather is widely considered to be Xi Jinping because she in traditional Chinese is white feather. And the last bird crashed on a mountain peak and, and uh, there was splash of blood. Uh, remember that, that picture? And there were four birds before him who were black. And so this picture, when I saw that, it, it reminds me of that, that picture, that prophecy picture. Um, but here, um, Xi Jinping quoted, um, made this, quoted this, I don't know, it must be an a, a ancient Chinese poem, it says, men of insight see the trend, while men of wisdom write it. And I asked, when I saw that, I asked one, uh, one of my friend who is a, a very good um, China expert, a China expert, he's very insightful, very knowledgeable. And I asked him, I said, what do you think of this? And he, he said he immediately thought of that prophecy picture. And, and we both feel that it's hinted here that the men of insight, this is just my interpretation, okay? Because it was posted immediately after the announcement of um, Li Keqiang's passing, and we thought that he is Xi Jinping is saying that Xi, Li Keqiang is man of insight, while he himself is man of wisdom, right? So Li Keqiang, I mean, it's just it's very obvious, and then it gives a very um, positive outlook because you know the birds flying there's a, a rising sun um so everything looked positive it was not uh, like a mourning or a sad spirit or, or a sad mood expressed here it's quite positive and it's quite confident so um so we were talking about so what is so going back to the question what does the passing of Li Keqiang mean to Xi Jinping it's definitely a a plus for him um there are people who speculated um if someone at the very top of CCP got rid of Li Keqiang i really don't hold that view i don't think that's the case um I don't think Li Keqiang has the ambition to challenge Xi Jinping and therefore got himself into that kind of danger. I do not think so. Um, so the chances that he died of some an, some unnatural causes um, or, or he was removed because he poses a threat to or posed a threat to Xi Jinping, I, I don't believe in that conspiracy theory. I think it was it was probably just a sudden death um and um and but his sudden death does give xi jinping a sense of relief because um although li keqiang does not have any political ambition to challenge li, uh, xi jinping but he does pose one threat that is his popularity among the people people like him People like Li Keqiang for who he is, right? Not only for his personality, he's a good person, he's a good man, but also for for the policies that he that he has become a symbol of. He represents the reformists. He represents, you know, opening up and economic reforms. So, so even though Li Keqiang does not do anything and only wants to go back to teaching and enjoys his re retirement life, but his existence can be used by Xi Jinping's political enemies um, 
to 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 create something to to against him you know his popularity you know his policies everything he represent everything this man represent can be used by Xi Jinping's enemies um as as a weapon to to oppose Xi Jinping so Li Keqiang's passing definitely give Xi Jinping a sense of relief because he has this, this one risk factor or one fewer political risk um, that exists around him. So it's definitely a sense of relief for him. Um, and that's that's why we see this post, because this post, um, this post has that air, has expressed that sense of relief, although it's positive. I mean, you know, for Xi Jinping to call Li Keqiang a man of insight, I mean, is still positive. But there is a difference between man of insight and man of wisdom, right? So um, so from, from his perspective, this post is positive. He, didn't, he, he does not put down Li Keqiang, but he use, uses the opportunity to elevate himself to a higher status. And I think that's exactly what he has in mind. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's just sh sh to share with you, um, the post from Xi Jinping's Twitter account, uh, 30 minutes after the public announcement of Li Keqiang's passing and the, the possible meaning behind this post. All right. Now <clears throat> I need to talk about, let me come back. Now I need to talk about what I think the 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 most what is, what does Li Keqiang's passing mean to the Chinese people? This is not a small matter, because <clears throat> the Chinese people have the history of using public mourning to stage protests, and we've seen that twice in the past since 1976. So in 1976, uh, let me share with you the picture here. Um, so this picture was <clears throat> was taken um, in April, early April of 1976, when the CCP's first premier Zhou Enlai passed away. He passed away uh, passed away on January 8th, and it triggered um, a, a, a successive events around the country to more to 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 remember him, to commemorate him, and. Um, so from Jan he passed away on January 8th. It started then, and um, my computer froze again. Um, and I just hope you guys, you guys can hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Um, I don't know why, but my computer is like frozen. And um, let me just, I don't know why. I, am I being hacked or this doesn't never happen? You guys, okay, good, good. Mike, okay, so I'm just going to talk. I'm not going to rely on any visual aids or anything. I'm just going to talk. Because in 1976, when China's premier passed away, on January 8th, it triggered a successive events all across China, and it ended up um, on a massive outpouring of public mourning um, on April 4th and April 5th. Um, I think on April, 100 million people went to Tiananmen Square on the 4th, and then 2 million, 1 million went, I mean, not, not at one time, I think at one time, the, the maximum number of people, the peak of the people was 100,000 on the 4th. Um, but throughout the day, about a million people went to Tiananmen Square. And that the picture you're looking at uh, was taken then. Um, and this one may be taken on the 5th. The 5th, the, the, the were, it, it, was, it was doubled. It was 2 million people. So um, eventually, the CCP ordered 10,000 militia who were... Uh, equipped with uh, batons, you know, like sticks. Um, they didn't open fire, but they used sticks to to beat up 
you know, to, to break up the crowds and, and you know, pe people were hurt, but nobody died. They sent 3,000 police and then um, a few thousand um, military personnel to, um, to the Tiananmen Square to break up the crowds. So that was in 1976. And then in 1989, um, Hu Yaobang, former CCP uh, leader Hu Yaobang passed away, and he was also considered one of the uh, more popular CCP leaders. And at the time, the Chinese economy was suffering. Inflation was a major problem. People were upset with how the CCP princelings were taking advantage of their privilege um, to make money, whereas the ordinary people were um, we're having, you know, we're having a hard time making a living because of inflation. So the economy was bad and people were upset with the way China was going. And also at the time, Hu Yaobang passed away. Now, Hu Yaobang was um, taken down by Deng Xiaoping because of his outspokenness and because of his um, liberal ideas. So he was sacked by Deng Xiaoping. And this, when he died, and also at an age that's rather young. He didn't die like in his 80s. And people, you know, had this outpouring of mourning for him and people went to Tiananmen Square. They repeated what happened in 1976, but on a much larger scale, more organized, and, and it lasted much longer. Um, it started in April and, and lasted two months in, until into. June, right? Um, and also it was a national outbreak. It it quickly spread throughout China. Um, and so it was much larger scale throughout China. And this time the CCP uh, opened fire on, on, on its citizens. Uh, unlike 1976, they just used uh, batons to break up people. This time they opened fire. So those were the two um, historical events, public, large, China's largest public protests, both took place under CCP. Both took place when an important politician died. So immediately, I think this is huge because right now, China, you know, China is in a what much worse shape than it was in 1976 and 1989. You know, Chinese economy. Um, so the passing of Li Keqiang at such a young age and, and who he was and the policies, the values he represented, everything uh, will give Chinese people a reason uh, to go to the street and, and, and hold a public warning. Because when you mourn someone, it's very difficult for, for, for the government to outlaw that, right? I mean, when people mourn a leader, I mean, what can Xi Jinping do? Say, oh, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to 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 do mourning. So it's the occasion gives people the uh, excuse to hold to stage a large event. Um, and and if if Xi Jinping is audacious enough to outlaw a public warning then it's going to be really bad. It will, it's going to make him look really, really bad. So it's going to create a very, very tough situation for the regime. I and mean, what, what, what is it going to do? What are they going to do? You all, you're going to outlaw people who are going to mourn a, a, a former leader? It's just impossible, right? Um, so I think it's going to, it could be, um, it could be the turning point. Uh, uh, for, for Chinese society. And we should closely watch this, watch how this will lead to in the next couple of days. Um, because um, given the amount of resentment the public has and given the, uh, the way Chinese economy is going and how much Chinese, even within the system, within the CCP's own system, how, how, much, how many Chinese officials are upset with the way China is going. They're just afraid. They're not, they're, they, they're afraid to say anything. So this event could give them the perfect, perfect um, excuse to say something. 
uh, without causing any political consequences. So um, that's that's what I think this event is significant, and that's what I changed my topic last minute to talk about this. All right, that's all I will say. And let me see if people have any questions. Um, I okay, my screen came back. Okay, let me see if people have any questions. I'll just quickly go through the the super chats. There there are some. Um, because this could be history uh, in the making. This could change history um, entirely. Sir Humphrey, hi, Lei. Have a great live stream and question time. I really enjoy your insights and wisdom. Thank you, sir. Uh, nutrition, a Atham, uh, is, it, is he being murdered? Um, I gave my reason. I highly doubt that. I, I I I do not believe that, but again, it's too mature to say anything. I mean, this is only a few few hours after the announcement came out, so I tend not to believe that. But who knows what we'll what we'll see in the next couple of days? Um, okay, let me see. Um, from Charles Womack, I believe she. Xi Zhu Xi, Chairman Xi, for his death. Okay, that's that's the belief that a lot of people, that's the opinion of a lot of people. Luke, thank you. Thank you for the for the donation. Um, let me see if people have other questions for me. I'll just go through the super chats real, really fast before I get to the other questions. Charles Womack, get a new computer. I, I got a new computer. <laughs> I invest invested uh, he a hefty amount of money to get a new computer. Uh, maybe it's not strong enough. Oh, who knows? But but thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, it seems to be working now. Um, all right. Okay, that's the end. So let me see. take some questions. Moonwalker, Lei, can you explain what a premier is and how one gets to that position? What are their responsibilities and does she control them? Okay, so CCP has two sets of government, okay? One is the party. So it has an entire apparatus set up for the party, like the 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 party, the central party, the central um, leadership, um, the central commission uh, of CCP, right? So it has two track. It has It's a two track government. Um, the party leader, Xi Jinping is the party leader, right? The secretary general of the party. There's an, another separate track. That's the government track. So the premier is supposedly the head of the government. Like he, 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 he manages the state council. So he manages all the different ministries, like the ministries of defense, the ministry of defense, the ministry of uh, foreign relations, um, like all, all, you know, so it, so the premier manages the government, and but the premier is under the party leader because the government and at any time, and within a province you have the governor of that province, um, but you also have a party secretary, right? In a city you have a mayor, but the mayor is only the head of the government. He's not the number one guy in the city. The party secretary of the city. Um, ranks higher than him, so 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 that so the premier is the head of the government. He supposedly is the number two guy in China, but the current premier Li Qiang is weak. He doesn't seem to be the number two guy um, in in China. All right. Um. Um, all right, let me see. Marco Polo, I had no idea of this startling news until I logged onto your video. Thank you for switching topics and giving, yes, it was, it was, it just happened. Um, I know there are people like to believe certain things, but I think we still, I try to be, uh, rational in analyzing the situation, um, so, 
I uh, I find it hard to believe. I think I tend to believe that he died of natural causes. Okay, so Marella Falso, very interestingly, I remember 1989, and it feels like a very similar situation in my opinion. It could turn out to be. H.R. Lay, will a public mourning bring momentum to public uprising against the party? Yes, if public mourning um, breaks out on a large scale like it did in 1989 or even 1976, then it will bring momentum. Um, it will, it, will, it will become an uprising against the party. Um, so Jeff Ramos, thank you for the super stickers. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Let me see. Um, that seems to be all. Oh, um, Uh, let me see. Heart attack? Heart attack. Yeah, that's what the the, the public announcement said. Lei, what do you think of Li Qiang? Um, Li Qiang is very weak. People used to say Li Keqiang was the weakest chi premier China ever had. No, he was not. Li Qiang is, the current premier, is the weakest. Um, and he's not doing much. He's just following, he's following, I mean, Li Keqiang at least tried to do his job as a, as the premier to revive China's economy, even though Xi Jinping did not give him much support, but at least he tried to do what he can. And sometimes he does seem to, I mean, the fact that he spoke the truth, he said publicly on record that 600 million Chinese live with a monthly income of of 100 of 1,000 yuan or less, that was like dropping a bomb um, <laughs> over Xi Jinping's head because Xi Jinping was pushing the narratives that under his leadership, China got rid of poverty. And so Li Keqiang had a lot of courage. You know, he is a, you know, he had a lot of courage and guts to say things that he believes was right. He believed was right. But Li Qiang did, does not have that gut, that gut guts um okay why xi jinping made a sudden visit to the bank of china is something ominous coming well he's certainly concerned about the financial crisis i'm i'm making a video on that he's very concerned with the the pending financial um tsunami that's you know that will result from the 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 bursting of the real estate bubble and the local government debt, right? So he he is very concerned. the The Western media reported that he is he went there to make sure China's foreign reserve is is in place. I really that could be, but I mean, what is he going to do to the central bank to 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 make sure the foreign reserves are there? I mean, he's not going to count how much U.S. dollars or euros they have in the bank. I mean, he I mean, <laughs> what is he going to do? Hey, make sure. We do have three trillion or whatever number of trillion of U.S. dollars in the bank. Show it to me. Show me the piles of money. <laughs> Show me the piles of greenbacks and then the gold, the tons of gold. No, you know, I, I, I think he, I think it was a symbol. It was, it, it was more symbolic um, that he went there because it was there was no CCP leaders before him who went to the central bank. Um, it was it was to to let the public know that uh, the financial crisis or the financial market or the economy is uh, top on his agenda. I think that's the real reason he went there. Um, Um, from Mitsu, are there current mainlanders who are concerned about Taiwan and try to warn them against CCP? You mean ma mainlanders concerned about Taiwan and what, from what perspective? Um, there are a lot of mainlanders who, who are against, who are anti-war. I mean, they're, they publicly say that. They say, oh, you know how there's so many Chinese posts on so Chinese social media who say, 
well, you know, if we have a war, if you give me a gun, sure, you know, I'll open fire on the real enemy. That's what the Chinese say, but everybody knew what they were, <laughs> what they were inferring, right? They, they didn't say who they're going to open fire on, but, but they say, well, if you give me a gun uh, at the time, you know, if we have a war, I'll, I'll open fire on the real enemy. So whoever the real enemy is, I mean, Chinese people know. So, so there are a lot of Chinese who are against the idea of a war um, with Taiwan or over Taiwan. Um, Jeff Ramos, model of the computer. Um, should I give that away? I don't want to give that away. <laughs> I don't want to say what kind of computer I use. Um, if you want to know, send me an email. <laughs> I, want, I want to protect myself. All right. Um, from Logician 3. IMF and World Bank still give China loans for Belt and Road. P please wear gold glasses next time. Please wear gold glasses next time. Gold glasses? Um, you mean glasses made of real gold? I cannot afford it. <laughs> or gold-toned glasses. Gold-toned glasses don't look good on me, I, although I have a pair. I'll, I'll try to wear it next time if you think that looks better on me. But silver looks better on me. Anyways, um, if I have a real pair of gold glasses, glass made of gold, well, that would be good. Uh, <laughs> your ID and password? Oh, okay. All right. Li Keqiang died? Yes. Yes, Li Keqiang died um, this morning at midnight on the um, uh, noontime our time, noontime Eastern Standard Time, but midnight, uh, a little after midnight on the 27th in, in Beijing's time. Um, silver is awesome, Lei. Okay. All right, good. So your computer needs faster RAM and yeah, probably so. I, I, I think so. Um, all right, I will, um, okay, so from this other may live, um, Maja, Muja, Mujadin, uh, Li Keqiang, oh, where, did, where did it go? Li Keqiang can't even get a heart transplant he needed and gone. So I don't think the so-called organ harvesting ever happened in China. Um, no, you cannot say that. We don't know. Um, I think... You know, things do happen. I mean, there are young people who who drop dead due to heart failure, heart attack, who, you know, who were health, healthy, who were not diagnosed with um, uh, with heart problems. I don't think Li Keqiang was diagnosed with heart problems. Maybe people never knew. But you, you never know. I mean, it's not like, you know, these kind of things, you know, are 100% are preventable. So... And uh, good question. What NTN? What would happen if Hu Jintao dies next? He's eighty years old. Yes. So th that's a very good question. So there have been rumors a couple of times about Hu Jintao is um, living on life support. Basically, he is, you know, purely living on life support. And if they unplug all the tubes, then he would die. So. Um, one Chinese media personality said that a few Western mainstream media approached him and asked him for input on a piece that they're working on about the legacy of Hu Jintao because they were preparing for the passing of Hu Jintao. So the rumor that that the some um, some CCP leaders or leader was. The, uh, dying was not a random rumor. So if Western media, more than one Western media was preparing to write, um, or to, to, is, were preparing for journalistic pieces on the legacy of Hu Jintao, that tells me that Hu Jintao probably um, is very fragile right now. And so if he also dies, I think, I don't think how, how there's no public uprising in China over the death of these two men. If if they're passing a within short period of time, if they're close to 
each other. I think Xi Jinping may, you know, do some, you know, using digital surveillance to put out public protest. But if two of them died within, because they're they are like mentor and mentee, right? So, so Hu Jintao is uh, Li Keqiang's mentor. And so if the pair died within a short period of time, that's political tsunami to Xi Jinping. I, I think there's just no way he could put out um, the uprising um, over that. Um, buy glasses with real silver frame, rose-colored, slightly clouded frames will look good on me. Slightly clouded frames will look good on me. On you, okay. Wow, clouded frames. Okay, slightly clouded frames. Okay, all right. All great suggestions, Philip. Thank you. Towards the golden glass glass fund. Okay, <laughs> all right. I need a computer more than I need glasses, guys. <laughs> I think I have enough glasses, but computer is sounds like is what I need. Okay, Anita Na Nagashisa. You are much more nice to answer some of these weird questions these people ask. Skip them. Um, well, I give all questions a fair chance, even though they're not very serious. I mean, I mean, you have, I don't know, I can't always take everything very seriously because then I would be drowned in this negativities of CCP politics. Uh, <laughs> so I have to keep a sense of humor at some of these things. So some of these strange questions are good for me uh, to keep my um, <laughs> sanity in place. So I don't mind them at all. Um, all right, let me see. Li Keqiang Heart Attack, American Moon Odyssey.com. Li Keqiang Heart Attack. In Europe, during Age of Kings and Popes, we would ask, a royal heart attack? The royal flu, if they were sick, then died. Real heart attack, age 68. Good question. I don't have the answer beyond what I had already said. Um, um, Mitsu, she is always so worried about being assassinated when he should be worried about his... <laughs> okay, that's a comment, all right? All right, from... Uh, from Ravi Not. Good morning. Is it real Mr. Li Keqiang is dead? I think he was Prime Minister of China. Yes, he's dead. Um, yep, that's what we are here discussing. All right. Um, Polar Bear. Will the death of Keqiang affect Xi travel plans to APEC and Biden visit? Uh, I don't think it will deter Xi's plan. I mean, he's he, he's not going to stay in China. Um, it depends. He may use that as an excuse. He may use that as, as an ex excuse. Did you hear the rumor? I, I heard the most outrageous, unbelievable thing about what the foreign ministry of China has demanded for Xi's meeting with Biden. I don't know if you guys have heard that, but number of number of um, people have commented that, and it came from a credible source. China's foreign ministry, okay, I think you're going to enjoy this one. China's foreign ministry has asked Joe Biden and his team to smile friendly when they meet with Xi Jinping in San Francisco. And their friendly smile, they should make an effort. They asked Joe Biden and his team to make an effort to smile <laughs> so that Xi Jinping will feel welcomed in San Francisco, okay? And I don't know, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, Joe Biden always have this goofy smile when he meets Xi Jinping, right? A politician smile. <laughs> so... But I don't know how how the Americans would would receive that. It's so it's so ridiculous. But 
Um, uh, anyways. So Lei, who is China's defense minister? No announcement yet. I was going to talk about that tonight, but I'm going to talk about that this weekend, I guess. All right. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Is his death related to mandate of heaven? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I cannot answer that. All right. So I will take... Um, in my lifetime, you didn't answer my question. So what was your question? Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I missed your 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 um question. So says Alex Adam, nobody tells POTUS what to do, especially smiling. It's utterly ridiculous. Yes, that's what we think. But hey, um, that's what the Chinese. That's what Wang Yi and then the Chinese foreign ministry would ask. You know, they I think they asked this to make Xi Jinping look good. They asked this to make Xi Jinping feel welcomed. I don't think it's necessary a mandate that directly came from Xi Jinping. I don't think it was the case where Xi Jinping said to Wang Yi, say, hey, when you when you met with Anthony Blinken, make sure you you pass the message that I want Joe Biden to smile when when we when we meet. I don't think that's the case, but it typically it's those people work under Xi Jinping, want to do everything they can to make the boss look good, to make the boss happy. They will go out of their way to make this ridiculous, ridiculous demand. And 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 to you know what? The Americans have been very accommodating to the to to the CCP leaders' whimsical requests. I must say the American Joe Biden has been very accommodating. So that's why they say, well, there's not we have nothing to lose, right? Because they, they no one is more thick skinned than CCP officials. You know, they're like, well, we have nothing to lose. We just ask. The worst is they say no, but they still will smile. So that's that's what happens. So they want to do this to make Xi Jinping look good. Um but it may just achieve the opposite result. I think it could infuriate American uh, politicians. You know, this may be the moment when they say, well, enough is enough. All right. Um, Marcus Wilson, where's the current Chinese premier? In Beijing or in China somewhere? Is he in trouble because he has not shown the last few weeks? He is in trouble. He is in trouble. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the Saturday. He he has been, he, his power has been weakened. Yeah, he, he is, he has, the guy is not doing much. Um, okay. All right. Um, one last question, and oh, in my lifetime, I asked whether she could have suspected that Li had contacts to the army leaders that tried to shoot down Xi's plane when he returned from South Africa. Well, first of all, I I'm I'm not sold on that rumor that Xi's plane was that someone was staging a coup d'état to uh, shut down Xi's plane. First of all. I, I'm not convinced that was the case. I don't think, if you understand the mindset of PLA officers, they wouldn't want to risk their their career, their life, and their family, the life of their children. I mean, they they're not going to risk that to do something so dangerous. And and you know, I mean, for for what, you know. If they just do nothing and just follow along, they have a good life. So they're not they're not going to risk that. You have to understand the mindset of these CCP, uh, these PLA officers. So I find that claim when I saw it, I I didn't comment on it. I didn't do a program on that because I I wasn't convinced that was the case. So there's so many rumors out there. There are all kinds of flavors. You know, some are credible, some are just rumors to conf to to make the water more to make the water muddier. So I first of all, that claim was not believable in my mind. And so 
for, for so for the question, she suspected that Li had contacts with the to the army leaders. No, I think she knows. Uh, I don't think Li Keqiang is the type of person who would who would do that kind of thing. Um, no, he he's a scholar. He's a scholar, um, and he he I think he really had enough. Uh, I think his heart may be aching or might be aching because he was not happy uh, with the way the country was going, but he's a scholar, and so he was not going to um, throw himself into a coup d'etat or anything like that, you know. So he just, you know, um, so I I don't think, I think the answer to your question is, is no, from my perspective, from my assessment. Okay. Uh, yeah, so from Han Nanzi, so you you're talking about the 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 comment that Xi Jinping made. Um, I talked about that the man of insight. What well, what was that? Man of insight. Uh, you're you're talking. Oh, this post. Men of insight see the trend, while men of wisdom write it. Yes, I. Is this a victory declaration of Xi? Could be. Uh, it's it, it could be his declaration of victory. Um, yeah. All righty. That's all for tonight. And I thank you very much for this um, last minute session. I hope it's helpful. And this weekend we'll talk about um, the impact of the 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 very interesting CCP politics after the sacking of the two ministers, the foreign minister and then defense minister. Okay, so uh, enjoy the rest of your day or the rest of your night, and I'll see you in a few days. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.